Okay. Um, so uh, we uh, we think of, of of you guys as the other RDA, and I'm sure you feel the same way about us. But <laughs> this is the RDA that I've been working with. Uh, it's a library standard, and uh, um, my business partner John Phipps and I have been working on it since 2008, although uh, not not paid for all that time, uh, sadly. Um, so. I have a couple of, let's see, I have some uh, slides, texty slides like this, but um, I also have some uh, some images that I can't, I don't really have time to go all the way through, but I, I thought it might be useful for people who, uh, you know, to go through them uh, later on because there's some stuff that you can't easily uh, get at if you're not, um, if you're not me or John, but this is kind of what our goals are. Uh, and we're talking primarily public vocabularies at this point, although we, at some point, I think we will be able to manage uh, private vocabularies as well. Um, and uh, we have a couple of services that are associated with, with what we're doing. Uh, it's, we, we cover both, um, you know, structural vocabularies, uh, element sets, whatever you want to call them. Everybody has a different name. Uh, and also uh, value vocabularies, or SCOS vocabularies, as, as people sometimes call them. So uh, it's, a, it's a slightly different um, kind of uh, panoply than the, than the, than the your RDA does. Uh, but it's, it's all absolutely necessary for what um, the the uh, this RDA or our RDA needs uh, because we're transitioning off uh, a world of uh, of Mark and uh, really there was no other way to do it. Okay, so this is kind of the we we call what we're doing kind of a three legged. Uh, stool, and I'll show you the picture later. First one is the Open Metadata Registry, um, and and that one you can get by uh, if you want to look at it while I'm talking, is the uh, it's metadata registry dot org. Metadata registry is uh, the, the whole word, um, and that that's really the 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 heart of the thing. And we. We started working on the Open Metadata Registry, which was at that time called the NSDL Registry, uh, about 2004, something like that. The uh, uh, the OMR is kind of the the, the central leg, if you will. Um, although, as I said, we've been working on it for a long time, and there, it shows its age in some ways, mostly with the user interface, which is kind of kludgy, but you know, it still works. And we're in the background um, trying to uh, rewrite it. It's it's using old um, old software and things like that. But we've kind of built on it, um, which is fine. But but we have to kind of go back and make that part work better. But one of the things we started doing, which when we first began working on this, was uh, we we record a detailed history of all changes, and um, it and and the provenance, you know, who did it, when they did it, et cetera. Um, and this, it's the, uh, it has along with it a specialized vocabulary server, which kind of takes a little of the burden off the old software. Um, but it, uh, and we have a lot of services that go along with that. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll get to some of those. All right, leg two is Git and GitHub, which I assume some folks are using or familiar with, uh, but that's where our version management comes in, a lot of our issues tracking and the documentation that we have for the RDA registry, although not, not yet with, with, the, with the open metadata registry. Okay, so the third part is the specialized RDA vocabulary management, which is the part that it really it doesn't have a user interface. It's really intended to for people to use to 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 read information or to access information, uh, but it it doesn't have a separate user interface because the OMR is really the only one that uh, uh, that is important in terms of what we're doing. 
So uh, it, do, it does make available downloads and, and all different kinds of uh, viewable data. Um, the, uh, when it says aggregated RIMF data, that's from a, a, a bit of software that we interact with, which is a, a, very, a very cool little um, uh, cataloging um, thing that allows you to work sort of um, in, in isolation. We're trying to get some money to, together to, to allow it to be a, a web uh, tool, but we're not there yet. Um, so the lexical aliases are kind of interesting because we've, we're doing a lot of stuff with um, translations and I'll, I'll show you kind of how that works when we, when we take a look at some of those. So the, our workflow is pretty, you know, kind of goes all over the place, but I have a picture after this and you can see how, how it relates to all these three, uh, these three uh, uh, legs. Um, so it, it, we're working primarily um, now with, not with direct input, although that's still allowable in the OMR. Um, and our major users um, do use that, but we're, we're trying to uh, make it possible to do a lot of um, import export using spreadsheets of various kinds. And that's been, that's been what we've been working on pretty, uh, pretty much for the last year and a half or so. So, um, we only have one user that is now enabled to do that, and that's um, Gordon Dunsire, who, who uh, does all the data uh, work for, for the RDA. So uh, let's see. This management workflow kind of goes all over. I'll show you with the picture. So the OMR and the vocabulary server are, you know, from, from the outside, uh, sound like different things, but they're actually pretty much the same thing. Uh, the vocabulary uh, service that's behind the OMR, the OMR has the user interface, etc. And so these numbers are, are for those workflow things that I did uh, that has, has numbers. So you can see that, that there's a fairly complex interaction between these things because they all have slightly different um, uh, functions. But anyway, I decided not to put uh, uh, any uh, any arrows in there because I thought nobody'd be able to read that. But you know, this is kind of for for further reference. You can take a look at that. Uh, and here here are the links that are I think the most important to look at as I'm going through the rest of these. But I thought I'd give you those up front. So if you want to um, if you want to look at some of that, well while I'm talking, feel free. And it will be on the presentation. Uh, so you'll be able to see it at any time. Okay, this is this is part of our newish stuff, which has uh, uh, which is the the um, the the Google Sheets import, and this is ALA Publishing, which is our our major um, user. And so you can see that 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 all of this information. Um, you know, when it was exported, when it was last imported, when it was edited within the OMR, all of those have separate columns. Um, so it really requires a fair amount of setup to do this. Uh, but we've, since we have our one major project, it's been, uh, they've been doing uh, pretty much all the testing and all the pain with the testing too. This is a, a view of the OMR data. Um, so you can see the element sets, uh, it it uh, manages all of the information about the history and uh, imports and maintainers, who's allowed to get in there and work on this stuff. And we have all kinds of, uh, as you can see, we're working fairly heavily on the, on the language, uh, the multilingual port parts of it. So it looks, it, it's a little hard to, to deal with, but this is the, the, uh, RDA work properties, RDA is based on Ferber, which is now um, LRM, the library reference model. Um, and so there's all kinds of pieces to that uh, that, that are used to describe each element. So at this point, um, you can export that data and then work on it offline and then import it back. That's that's really what we're what we're working on at the moment. Here's a list of exports for one 
uh, property. These are just screenshots and I'll leave you to look at them in a, in a better way. I think the important thing is that all of that stuff reflects the fact that we are keeping track of every transaction on these list of vocabularies. It's a huge amount of data, but it's really important. Uh, so here's the, here's a, that this little box tells you what, what happens when you look at the updated on that column. And it tells you uh, that the previous action was, was added. So that was the first time it appeared. Um, and this is, uh, I think this is German. And it, the status is, is new, published, old, published. So it started out as published. It didn't change its status as part of this update. This is, this is again, from directly from the OMR, and it, and it gives you the history information about a, a particular property and, uh, and who, who did it. And, and the last column says import. So you know you have a numbered import that you can look uh, for to, to figure out if something went wrong. All of this is kind of in there so that we can, we can really um, problem solve a lot of this stuff which is really hard to do once you get outside of the, the box. Uh, so this is the RDA registry, which is that, that part that is the, the basically read only. We don't, uh, we don't manage the data through this, um, but we manage the, uh, the data itself, you know, make the downloads available, um, allow you to get uh, information in a, a variety of different language um, and it gives you some uh, uh, some of the uh, extended information down down at the bottom so the when you look at the left column under Curie you see RDAW and then a number that's we do all of our URIs are set up like that um, so that you have RDAW, which means work properties, and then the, the number allows you to have a number that is that works for every language because that's the uh, that's the the basic URI. The languages have what we call lexical aliases. In other words, they also have additional um, URIs that are in the language that the that that translation is in, uh, and they but they all point in the data back to that original. Um, that original Curie. Okay, here's a, here's one from a value vocabulary uh, carrier type, which of course is the Scosbit, and these are are handled pretty much the same way. You can see this one's in Chinese, I believe, and uh, and and there's a lot of information there in in Chinese, um, although because you have all the all the information about what it's re reflected. Um, you can you can see it in any language. You can see it under the languages on the front there. There's a, a red box around Chinese. Okay, this is part of an example spreadsheet, and there's a link there if you want to take a look at it. So again, we're working very heavily on the multilingual versioning for both the element sets and the value vocabularies. Um, th this has proved to be a really interesting um, challenge because English is the primary language, so everything um, uh, every translation is based on the sort of the ER language here, um, but the translations are done by independent uh, folks who are working uh, within the within the group, and they don't necessarily um, they don't necessarily get to a, a translation, or they don't necessarily update it at the same schedule. So we're having to deal with that that there is the the version of the primary language English, and then there are um, there are versions that are inherent in the in the addition of, of the different languages. Um, so we have um, issues about when the language of the of the um, of the when when the information of a particular language results in a change, even if the English didn't change, but we always have to kind of go back. Uh, link back to the to the version that was being used in the translation anyway. So this all <laughs> this all gets pretty crazy. Um, so we're we're working on trying to figure out if there's a better way to do it. Um, and the bottom uh, bullet says that moving the, each language into a separate 
uh, GitHub repo and version them independently is one of the things we're looking at. We haven't quite made a decision yet. Um, so this is this is kind of where we're intending to go, what we're trying to do, where we are with it. Um, and again, I've, uh, the custom application profiles is, is based on um, how, how you uh, design your data, basically. And, and uh, so we have application profiles within the OMR uh, and other people can make uh, application profiles for their data and we're starting to get to the point where we would like to be able to store them and use them for output. Anyway, so um, we're, on a, we're on the beta version of the OMR at this point, but nobody is allowed to use it except us. <laughs> but uh, that, because you can't get people to test stuff like that unless they know what's going on. Um, so we're, we're kind of at the point where we're doing a lot of it testing internally and not ready for prime time. Okay, you may notice, this is, our, this is one of my favorite slides, that there are two cars there with the same license plate, except one is New York and the other one is Ontario. So that's our, that's our, our business logo. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So the same, same words in a different context and they had different license plates in the end. Well, right. John is very proud that the Ontario license plate says yours to discover, you know, <laughs> mine says empire state. Well, what does that mean? 